The Wedding Act 3, Scene 3, Enter Buford's Lodgings. Buford and Captain Lambie. Captain, I have a letter. Buford from whom? Captain Gradiana. Buford, I would forget that name. Speak it no more. Captain, she is abused, and if you had not been transported from us with your passion, you would have changed opinion to have heard how well she pleaded. Buford, for herself? Captain, you might, with little trouble, gather from her tears how clear she was, more transparent than the morning dew or crystal fell neglected upon the ground. Some cunning jeweler, to have seen them scattered, would have thought some princess dropped them, and covetous to enrich himself, gathered them up for diamonds. Buford, you were then converted? Captain, oh, you were too credulous. Marwa displayed the villain as damned for it. Could but his soul be brought to hear her answer the accusation she would make that blush and force it to confess a treason to her honor and your love? Buford, you did believe her, Captain, I did, and promised her to do this service she begged of me, departing, if she sent a letter, to convey it to your hand. Pray read, you know not what this paper carries. <sighs> Buford, has she acquainted you, Captain, not me? I guess if some secret was not fit for my relation, it may be worth your knowledge. Do her that justice, since you would not hear what she could say in person to peruse her paper. Buford, it can bring nothing to take off the offense committed, Captain. Captain, sir, you know not what satisfaction it contains, or what she may confess in it for my sake. Read. Buford reads the superscription. To him that was, what? Confident of her virtue, once an admirer, now a mourner for her absent goodness, she has made the change from her that was, would have become this paper. Had she conserved her first immaculate whiteness, it had been half profane not to salute her letter with a kiss, and touch it with more veneration than a sibyl's leaf. But now all ceremony must be held, superstition to the blood scroll of a more stained writer. I'll not read, if I'm prepared, she win with her discourse. What must she do when she has time and study to apparel her defense? Captain, deny her this. Buford, well, I will read it. And her servant. Servant, here's John Belfort. Buford, say anything, excuse me, be your care that none approach the chambers. Captain, so now, unrip the seal. And her Sir John Belfort and Isaac. Belfort, not speak with him. He must have stronger guard to keep me out. Where's Buford? Buford, here. Belfort, there. It's a villain. Buford, that's coarse language, Belfort. I must not spin it finer till you make me understand better why my daughter and in her family is abused. Buford, she has not then accused herself, I'll tell you. I did expect your daughter and would have been my virgin bride, but she reserved for me the ruins of her honor. I would not speak in the rude dialect you may collect sooner in English. Belfort, is she not honest? Will you make her then a whore? Buford, not I. Her own sin made her. Belfort, that wise. Nor can my age make me appear unworthy of satisfaction from thy sword. Isaac, does he not call my young mistress whore? Belfer, keep me not from him, Captain. He has in this given a fresh wound. I came to expostulate the reason of a former suffering, which unto this was charity, as thou art a gentleman. I dare thee to the combat. Condemn not, Buford, my gray hairs, if thou hast a noble soul. Keep not this distance. Meet me, thou art a soldier." For heaven's sake, permit me, chastise the most uncharitable slander of this bad man. English, old copy in English, meant even thus, the meaning is rather a matter of guess than of certainty. Buford, I never injured you. Belford, not injured me. Was there then in nature left to be called an injury? Does now mock me and my poor girl, fond girl with marriage till all things were designed the very day when Hyman should have worn his saffron robe, my friends invited and prepared to call her bride. And yet, as if all this could not, summed up together, make an injury. Does that corrupted soul at last conspire to take her white name from her? Give me leave to express a father in its hair to. For my wrong child, Abufer, thou hast robbed a father and a daughter, but I will not usurp heaven's justice, which shall punish thee, bow of my weak arm. Mayst thou live to have thy heart. As ill reward to be a father, and my years have one daughter no more. Beloved is mine, so mocked, and then called whore. Captain, alas, good old man, boo for my afflictions, are not yet unnumbered in my fate, nor I held right for death. Captain, now read the letter, Buford, yes. Cannot make me no more misery. Buford, I dare not call thee mine, though I could not help while I was living. Thou wouldst believe my innocence, deny me not this favor after death to 
Say, I once loved thee. Ha, death. Captain, is she dead? Captain, I hope she employed not me to bring this news. Buford, yes, death. Ha, prithee, read the rest. There's something in my eyes. I cannot well distinguish her small characters. Captain, my accuser by this time knows the reward of my injury. Farewell, I'm carrying my prayers for thee to another world. Her own martyr drowned. Gradiana. Buford, read all. Captain, I have. Buford, I cannot be. For when thou makest an end, my heart should give a tragic period. And with a loud sigh break, drown. T'was no sin above heaven's pardon. Though thou hast been false to thy first vow in me, I would not have read thee die so soon, or if thou hast effected that death, I could have drowned thee with my tears. Now they shall n never find thee, but be lost within thy watery sepulchre. Captain, take comfort. Buford art dead. Then here I'll be coughing up myself until the law unbury me from Marwa's death. I will not hope for life. Mercy shall not save him that hath now a patent for his grave. 